Hey guys and girls, it's Mr. A here, and we're going to take a look at a little bit of nuclear chemistry. It's really hot stuff, and the top five pet peeves that I've got rattling around in my brain today don't go away. Nuclear chemistry, after all, is not anything scary. It just has to do with the nucleus of the atom. You have your positive protons, your neutral neutrons. For a simple example, let's take the helium nucleus. Two protons and two neutrons for its most common isotope. But why do the protons stick together? After all, the two positive charges should re be repelled by electrostatic charge. There has to be something that holds them together. We call that the strong or nuclear force that only works over short range. Okay, pet peeve number five. People who worry about things like the fact that the number of hot dog buns is not the same in a package as a package of hot dogs. Really, you should be concerned about what's in the hot dogs to begin with. If you're going to worry about something, get a life. Dude, I'm totally not into math. Nuclear reactions are those changes that take place only within the nucleus of atoms. An example here, you have the mass number on the top and the subscript is the number of protons. So beryllium bombarded with helium nuclei becomes carbon and a neutron. In this example, you can see that an atom of polonium can break down or decay into a helium nuclei and a lead nuclei. The top number is the mass number, which is protons and neutrons. The subscript is the number of protons. They balance out, just like a regular chemical equation. How about people who feel like they have to go buy some purebred dog to be really cool? Well, you can have a good old American mutt stray like Mia here, and she's just the best dog ever, aren't you? Are you the best dog ever? Yes, you are. Have really stinky breath. I think she's been eating sheep poop again in the pasture. Mm, thank you. That's nice. Dude, that's bogus. Totally unsavory. Radioactive decay is when the nuclear force has a hard time holding large nuclei with lots of protons and neutrons. And this emits nuclear radiation, which can consist of alpha particles, which are actually helium nuclei, beta particles, which are fast-moving electrons, and gamma radiation, which is actually a form of light. Alpha emission, a type of radiation, puts out helium nuclei as a product. The same goes for beta emission. Fast-moving electrons are a product of this reaction. Electron capture is where a proton combines with an electron to form a neutron. Gamma emission is not a particle at all, but high-frequency electromagnetic radiation, a form of light. Pet peeve number three. People who answer their cell phones while they're talking to you. Okay, what is it they're just talking to you unless something better comes along? It's not cool. Dude, that is so wrong. That is totally wrong. Oh, hold on, dude. Dude, what's up? Let's look at these three types of radiation. Alpha, which is a helium nuclei, beta, which is electrons, and gamma radiation. Paper can stop the large alpha particles, whereas the electrons, the beta, and the gamma go through. Beta can be stopped by lead or glass, where gamma radiation can penetrate even thick layers of concrete or lead. Pet peeve number two. 
People who take themselves way too seriously are fairly irritating, I think. Why, I was just talking to my buddy uh, Diggit, the garden gnome, the other day. It was kind of a one-sided conversation. But we decided that life is just too short to be serious all the time. Don't you think, buddy? Yeah, right on. Dude, that's just wrong. Undeniably, the most famous mathematical formula is Einstein's E equals mc squared, where energy is shown to be equivalent to mass times the speed of light, c squared. The speed of light, obviously a huge number squared, makes a little bit of mass converted to energy, a lot of energy, like the atomic bomb. Half-life is just the measure in time of how long it takes a nuclear reaction to change a radioactive isotope into something else. A common use of this is carbon dating where the age of ancient wooden items can be determined by measuring the amount of carbon-14 remaining in the items. The half-life of carbon-14 is 5,700 years. And finally, my recent number one pet peeve. I'm sorry, but it's Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt. Here they are, fairly young guys, lots of hair, movie stars. What do they do in their latest movies? These amateurs have got to make up like they're old bald-headed guys. Gosh, where could you possibly find an old bald-headed guy? There's plenty of us out there. I mean, come on, some type casting. What's the deal? Okay, now honestly, can you really tell which one is the famous movie star and which one's not, at least yet? Okay, it's pretty tough. Look carefully. See if you can tell the difference. Okay, I have a large tolerance for embarrassment, but I was not taking my shirt off. Oh, dude, that is filled with unawesomeness. Not cool. Okay, real quick, let's look at a couple of the items that we've talked about here in review. Protons and neutrons are the nucleons that make up the nucleus of an atom. Both of these are made up of smaller quarks. Protons would normally repel each other on account of their like or positive charges, but only when protons and neutrons are very close together does the nuclear or strong force have enough force to hold them together. The larger a nucleus gets, the further apart the protons and neutrons are and the harder time the nuclear force has holding them together. And out of this comes radioactivity, where radioactive isotopes have unstable nuclei that undergo nuclear reactions. Remember that isotopes are atoms that have the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. These reactions can release alpha, beta, or gamma radiation. Gamma radiation is high frequency light that is very penetrating. Beta is made of fast moving electrons that have less power. Alpha radiation is actually helium nuclei, which are on the atomic scale very large and easily stopped. Dude, that is awesome.